Welcome to Higher Ed Live, the live weekly web show all about the world of higher education, where we're all about digital development and professional empowerment. I am your host, Seth Odell, coming to you at a special day and a special time. That's right, Thursday afternoon. It's 1 p.m. Eastern time. We're shaking it up, not Sunday nights, and I got some news for you. We are on Thursdays, officially starting now. Thursday show, that's right, weekdays just for you. We might be moving the time. We might be coming to you maybe a little bit at 4 o'clock tomorrow, 4 o'clock next week, sorry. We're going to work on it. We're going to see. But most importantly, it's a weekday show now. Where am I? Well, I am here at Southern New Hampshire University, uh, one of my you know, very proud employer. We're very happy to work here, amazing institution. We are live at SNHU as we're going to be each and every Thursday now with Higher Ed Live. So thank you guys for joining the show. Again, I'm out of place, new environment, so stick with me. But let's do a quick thank you to the sponsors that helped make this show possible. Higher Ed Live is sponsored by Integral, the creators of the school app on Facebook. So be sure to check out their webinar series about how they can help you leverage Facebook to increase yield and retention. That happens next Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm sitting on the link out right now. If you haven't already, go ahead and check those guys out. But they are not the only sponsors. Oh, no, no, no. We are also sponsored by Omni Update. Omni Update, the leading web content management system CMS provider for higher education. The company's web CM, CMS OU campus is secure, scalable with great tools and features, deployment flexibility, and an awesome user community to boot. In fact, it was the highest ranked CMS in customer satisfaction in 2010. EDU Guru Survey, so if you need CMS, what are you doing? Well, watch the show. Stay watching us. But then, after that, get right over to OmniUpdate.com. And finally, we are sponsored by Scavenger. It's a Google-funded mobile game about going places, doing challenges, and earning points. This year, uh, La Roche College used Scavenger as part of their resident assistant training program. Uh, GTL, Jim Tan Laundry, uh, you want to check out the results. It was uh, a pretty interesting one. So I'm going to send a link out to that in just a minute. So that's our sponsors. Thank you, guys. And let's go right ahead and bring today's guests on. Today's show is called a Rookie's Review High Ed Web. Uh, because I went to Hyatt Web for the first time ever last week in Austin, Texas, but I was not alone. Uh, two of the guys I hung out with, actually, I'm going to bring on right now, are uh, two of the guys that are from Integral. First, I would met Gabe before, but I had not met Brandon before, so it's kind of new to us. So what, joining us on your side, it should be on the right side of the screen, is uh, Brandon Crow, community builder and student uh, evangelist at Integral, and then uh, Gabe Sanchez, ed tech advocate. So uh, the reason I asked both uh, Gabe and Brandon to come on the show today is because we were talking at Hyatt Web. The last day, we were sitting around the table and talking all about how, how do you actually recap something like this? Uh, a conference like this, it, the experience was really pretty amazing. And uh, Brandon was the one that said, you know, you should really just pull on a bunch of people that haven't been there before because that's kind of where you get this really fresh perspective because for us, I mean, people that have been there, they kind of know. I mean, Carlin, who's, who's hanging out with me now, she told me every year how great it is. So for someone who hasn't experienced it yet, well, that's a rookie's review, and that's what we're doing. So first off, guys. I'm going to slow down for about 30 seconds, maybe 10 seconds, maybe five, and just say welcome to the program. How are you doing? Thanks for having us, Seth. Thanks, Seth. Yeah, I, I, I will say, uh, already we have a great comment coming from Mike Pedroff saying Plaid is in these days. I agree. The Integral guys are big backers <laughs> of Plaid, uh, big supporters in a, in a big, big way. So uh, thank you for coming on the show, guys. I can't wait to dive into the High Ed Web 2011 conference, talk about our experiences. But first... We start each and every show with a little something I like to call the Weekly Five. Five stories from around the world of higher education that are worth reading, noting, starring, or promising yourself, I swear I'll read this article. So let's go right ahead and dive into the five stories for this week. Let's do that now. First off, guys, can't stress enough, if you did not make it to High Ed Web, do not fret. Not only are you going to get this show and lots of other content, but Link, the journal uh, that is being organized by the High Ed Web folks, did an amazing job, amazing job of... Uh, this of covering the whole conference. So just really, really great stuff. I'm sending a link out. Almost every talk had someone writing a, a blog about it, putting an article together. If you could not make it, this is the next best thing. Um, huge props to Link. And uh, yeah, again, guys, get over there. Read these articles. There's a lot of great stuff that was being presented. So I think that's really, really cool. Next up, a cool little thing called Ready to Go Mo. It's being put out by uh, Google and it's supporting and promoting the idea of mobilizing your site. Um, now, you can put in your URL and see what your site looks like now on a mobile device. It takes a really long time to load for a lot of higher ed sites, a lot of pages. But you know, while this is really geared in a lot of ways towards small businesses, it's a pretty cool tool to use if, you're, if your school is still kind of thinking about going mobile. There's a lot of resources, case studies, a lot of information. So you know, check it out. Uh, I thought it was actually a really, really well-designed site. It's the kind of site that has great information that's easily shareable for you know, the people maybe higher up on the food chain a little bit. So uh, I think it's just you know, really great to have that as a resource. Next up is a big heavy hitter news. Uh, Pearson and Newton teamed up 
and uh, are making a pretty major partnership. Uh, Pearson's is the world's biggest publisher of print and online textbooks. They'll tell you that's not all they do, but that's what they're known for. They're the world's biggest. And then Newton is a New York City startup that's working to essentially provide a new learning experience based upon Pearson's Pearson's books, essentially. Pearson's using the traditional textbooks, merging to do online stuff. Newton is trying to change the way people learn online. This is a pretty powerful partnership. Um, I, I was excited about it. Newton is a pretty cool company to follow. Um, but guys, keep an eye on this partnership because online learning, as I think a lot of us agree, is a real direction we're moving in. Obviously, we are here at SNHU. And this partnership's interesting. I'm really, really excited to see what Newton can do. And clearly, this kind of partnership shows they have the access to really make some of this stuff happen. Next up is an exciting announcement that we just put out on the website this morning. I promised a new announcement for Program in Higher Ed Live uh, on the show today. Well, I kind of jumped the gun and put it out this morning just because, I don't know, I got excited. So anyways, starting next week, Higher Ed Live is launching a brand new interview series called Meet the Innovator. And it is a pre-recorded 10-minute interview series where we're going to interview innovators in higher education inside colleges and universities, outside working for private companies, anywhere. If you're making a difference in higher ed and if you're making a shift, making a pivot, making an impact, we're going to talk to you. We're looking to roll out, no joke, I don't know how or why we're going to try to do this, 10 of these a month. 10 pre-recorded 10-minute interviews with different innovators around the industry. I have five of those interviews lined up next week that I'm doing and I'll be pushing out. Guys, we're going to introduce a lot of people to this space, and I need you guys to not only tell me who you want to see on the show, uh, but also have a dialogue. Look to tune in, watch, tell me what you think of these people, and again, if you know an innovator in your industry, whether it's someone in your office, down the hallway, a vendor you work with, anybody, anything goes. My goal is to really support disruptive innovation and sustainable innovation and really showcase the kind of people that are making a difference. Some of them we know about, they're active on Twitter, some of them you got to dig a little bit deeper for. So that is Higher Ed Live, Meet the Innovator, new interview series launching well, launched today, but it's rolling out next week. And finally, one of the more interesting things is um, why the, well, I apologize, but why the fuck should I choose Oberlin? A, an unofficial marketing campaign for Oberlin College um, that is just absolutely hilarious. And uh, it's not officially condoned uh, by Oberlin, but it sounds like it was something they were kind of aware of and they're just kind of le leaning away from acknowledging. Basically, it's a website where people can submit sort of hilarious and um, sort of slightly vulgar and offensive uh, reasons why they love Oberlin. And uh, yeah, they dropped the F word around a little bit, but this thing is really going viral. Almost 300,000 page views the first day alone. Uh, this is hysterical. And um, I actually think it's really great. This is a prime example of delivering the kind of content that your audience wants to see, your audience wants to experience. Um, yeah, I think it's really funny. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out. And uh, now it's time for the unsolicited shout out of the week where we shout out any person, place, thing, or idea for any real reason. And the reason why, well, because I can. It's my show, and that's what I get to do. If you guys have a shout out that you want to try, please throw it out with the hashtag Higher Ed Live. I, I'm happy to hear it. But in the meantime, this shout out this week just goes to the folks at Hi Ed Web, the organizers that put the conference together. Uh, it is amazing how much work it takes to put something that together. And, Everyone is so unbelievably helpful. We're going to dive into the conference and our experiences in a second, but um, I had a, a problem the last day where I ended up having to present my presentation two more times, and I was supposed to be live streaming, and you know, people just stepped up everywhere and were helping me. So um, that's just a great group of people. So unsolicited shout out to them for making this happen and uh, being in it for all the right reasons and making a real impact. So I love that. That's great. But guys, let's get right to the show. So uh, first off, you know, Gabe Brandon, welcome back. Are you guys ready to uh, spit the spit and have a little bit of conversation? Let's chat. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, you know, for folks, I mean, everyone probably is aware, obviously, at this point, if they're watching the show, um, but Hi Ed Web is, you know, an annual conference uh, for Hi Ed Web marketers, web people, you know, tech folks. It, it, it's actually a pretty broad brush for a lot of folks, um, but it's an annual conference. And, you know, programmers to marketers to designers, you know, pretty much anybody on your team could kind of fit into this. Uh, it's sold out this year as it has in the past, but like eight weeks early or something unbelievable. This thing is really booming. Um, and it's known not only for really amazing presentations, a little bit different, a little bit edgy, um, the vibe, really friendly, and the whole setup. So uh, just generally, this year's conference was in Austin, Texas. Uh, my first time to Austin. That was pretty cool. I mean, before we even dive into the conference, guys, I, I assume uh, you guys have probably been to South by Southwest before. So is this a, a return trip for both of you to Austin? So I actually met uh, Michael last South by Southwest. It's just how I wound up at Integral. So uh, the last time I was in Austin uh, was was how I wound up here. And I'd like I think that High Ed Web is the South by Southwest of higher education. And uh, I actually had a lot more fun at High Ed Web than I did at South by this past year. So uh, definitely props for everybody who put that together. Yeah, 
And I've I've never been to Austin, so it was. Well, so awesome. this is real. This is a serious rookie review show. Then I mean, this is okay. I'm this is working out even better than I thought. <laughs> I like this. Um, okay, Austin was pretty crazy. It was pretty exciting. Um, as a rookies review, step number one for people that maybe haven't been to Hyatt Web yet, one of the really cool things with the conference is the way it's structured. That uh, you know you have a lot of tracks. You know, there's five or six tracks going on. Uh, but then at the end of the conference, you know, at the end of each presentation, people kind of review and give feedback. Uh, this year was via an awesome mobile app. Really, really well done. I mean, really well done mobile app by Hyatt Web. And you can review the speaker, and then they take the people the best scores in the last day. Um, they have a thing called the Red Stapler track, where you like win a Red Stapler if you are best in track. Um, and then the people that were best in track can present a couple more times. So uh, that's really cool, because you can see kind of a lot of different vetted talks. Um, that's one cool, really, difference, I think, with Hyatt Web. That was exciting. Um, so that was great. I am very grateful to say I actually won the red stapler from my track, which is awesome. But unfortunately, it means I missed all the other really good red stapler talks for the most part. Um, I don't know about you guys. It was so hard for me to even try to like make it to all the talks I wanted to see. I'm, I was looking back uh, last night before getting ready for the show, and there's still talks that I'm like, how did I miss that? And that's why I had to go through and find the link articles about them, because there was a, really a lot of good content going on. There was there was way too much. It was it was info overload and uh, a lot of places to be at one time. Yeah, yeah. And, and I guess there was there was a presentation track up on the the, the a really a top floor that I never even heard about until it was all over. So I actually missed Georgie's, which was the winning presentation who I wanted to see. But it was uh, it was up an elevator ride that I that I was out of the loop about. Yeah, I agree. For like the first day, I totally missed the seventeenth floor. It was a whole other thing. And that's right, Georgie Cohen won best in show for everything. Um, talking about online newsrooms and content creation, and I mean, very well deserved. She's really, really brilliant. Um, because, it, by the way, she's got meetcontent.com as her blog she does with Rick Allen. Check that out if you haven't already. Probably, I would argue, one of the top five higher ed related uh, blogs or websites, period, on earth, as far as content's concerned. So, um, really, really great stuff. So, that's kind of the structure, guys. You know, let's dive in and talk about some presentations a little bit. Um, before we even get into more of the vibe or anything else, like, what were some, uh, what were some presentations that maybe stood out to you? As a, as a rookie that was either maybe different that you were kind of surprised to see or just ones that had really good takeaways or lessons for you? Uh, well, Carlin's uh, had, I think, the most kind of creativity, yeah. uh, what your university can learn from ICP. Yeah, uh, insane clown posse. <laughs> I thought hers, I was, I, I, I thought, I knew the angle she was coming at, you know, being remarkable, taking some risks, but then... She really kind of recapped the whole thing, and then by the end, uh, kind of a tear-jerking conclusion. Uh, I loved her presentation, and uh, she also won her track, which was I thought well deserved. I really enjoyed uh, the whole the whole lessons and takeaways from that one. Gabe, what do you think, man? You're kind of silent over there, bro. Let's get you to speak oh, up. What are your thoughts? If you want to speak, I'll let him take the floor. No, but I would say Carlin's presentation was pretty good. Um, I was kind of hoping I would get sprayed uh, by some Fago during that, but I uh, didn't. Um, no, but that was pretty good. Uh, Sven, Sven had a pretty good presentation style. You know, He incorporated the whole you know, cooking, the steps to take in terms of making a program. Even for someone who wasn't, you know, for people in the audience who weren't coming from a technical background, he made it fun and made it interactive and related it to things that you might know. So yeah. that was pretty good. Yeah, I agree. And, and again, Carlin's presentation was pretty awesome because, uh, you know, I, as most people know, I work with Carlin here at Southern New Hampshire University. When she told me, you know, this is the talk she's giving and, and kind, of, kind of let me take a peek at some of the slides, um, it's kind of crazy. You know, it's really different. And that really, I think, highlights what Hi Ed Web is all about to me was that, you know, this is not a stuffy, you know, one to many kind of conference where you're just going to be lectured at about how to do things better. It's, it's a lot more about inspiration and telling stories. There's a lot of really good narratives in a lot of the presentations that I saw as well, um, which was really nice. Um, but yeah, I think hers example is really good. Um, one I also want to bring up too is a really great fundamental talk was that kicked off pretty much the whole presentation as far as the social media track uh, was Mike Petroff's uh, social media as, uh, I don't know, was it it's social media for customer service. Um, Really good fundamental talk about you know understanding customer service, supporting our students. Had a lot of good tools in there, um, but I really liked the, the points that he hammered home. Um, I thought that was a pretty good point, and I think not a lot of times we approach things as marketers, um, but you know as uh, again as Carlin said yesterday, I think it was on Twitter. You know, customer service is marketing, uh, and I think Petrov hit that home pretty well as well. Absolutely, uh, Mike's one of the top thought leaders in, in higher ed, and I was actually uh, wait, I was waking up that morning and I had a dream that I missed his presentation. And I woke up in a panic at about six in the morning, and then I was like, "Oh gosh, I, I didn't miss it." Cause this was the first uh, first presentation on Monday, so he kicked off the social media track 
with, like you said, examples, high level strategy, a different way of looking at social media about service. And I thought, yeah, it was definitely a really comprehensive, uh, well done job. And in a, in a, in a, you know, when we were talking about social media, it's such a broad topic you can come at from so many different angles. I think he covered a, a really important angle that it's not just about marketing, it's about your students. And uh, it's about listening to what, what they're saying online because it's really about, it's about them. Yeah, a you know, absolutely, absolutely. Um, by the way, um, I heard, saw a question come in earlier about do we have archives of uh, the Red Stapler tracks? Unfortunately, um, because I received the Red Stapler, I had to give two talks at the same time that I was supposed to live stream the four other ones. Um, so I got some help from the Hyatt Web folks, but it was a bit of a challenge. So I have some archives of, the, of a couple of the Red Staples. There was a couple of tech problems. I'm going to get the ones that I have posted, but it's not comprehensive, unfortunately. But again, Link has comprehensive coverage for text, uh, and I'm going to make sure I dig up all the video that I do have to get those out there. Um, so that was important. I uh, wanted to know, I want to bring us to talk about too, is just, um, we heard a lot of cool tools at the conference. I don't know, you know if you heard of any you cared about, but I just love that Mallory Wood kept bringing up uh, uh, FormSpring. FormSpring has been a site that, I mean, she came on episode nine of Higher Ed Live. We're on to like in the 50s now. She came on episode nine talking about FormSpring uh, for student blogs and, you know, as an interactive FAQ. Um, really cool tool. And it was great for her to have a chance to kind of share that with more people because I'm shocked that one hasn't taken off. Um, but there's definitely a lot of cool tools floating around to the people we're talking about. Yeah, I, I'd like to see more talk, uh, maybe even kind of how the poster session was, where people could break out and discuss some different tools that aren't as you know aren't as popular, and just have little breakout sessions around something like that. I think that would be really you know help beneficial for people. Yeah, I totally agree. And by the way, uh, people out there on Twitter, guys, you're tweeting right now, but tell us what you think. You know, we're the three rookies here, obviously, that have never been to this conference before, have never experienced something like this. But you know, what were your favorite presentations? What were your favorite takeaways? Your favorite presenters? Your favorite tools? Bring them in right now in the tweet stream. I'm going to display what you guys are saying, um, and I'm going to show it on the screen. We're going to talk about it because you know part of the goal with having this show is trying to see what our views are versus the people that are the vets that have been there a lot. So if you're a vet and you're out there, get in there and start typing. Um, but so okay, a lot of the presentations were really good. Uh, a lot of them were kind of a little bit of your standard PowerPoint speaker. Even mine was. I'll admit, you know, was someone standing up there. I got to say, what you guys did was pretty cool though um, with your time slot because uh, Integral had a time slot they were given. And uh, you took the high road, and you did something totally different, and took a big risk. Um, so, folks that weren't there, or maybe that didn't make it, why don't you tell them about your kind of unpresentation, or whatever you would call what you guys actually did with your time? Well, we had this idea. Um, M Michael Staten was was kind of off in Africa for a month, and, and so Gabe and I were left in charge of figuring out the conference presentation. So we thought, why don't we turn it on its head and just allow all the participants who are in the room to share their ideas around three categories around social media and higher ed. So we wanted to gather from thought leaders at the conference, what are the top social media wins, top social media fails, and the top social media wants for higher ed and kind of an admissions recruitment marketing standpoint, uh, not necessarily in the classroom uh, topics. So we did a trial run internally with our company and our first idea totally failed. It, it was kind of ugly so we re reiterated and we kind of changed it and we, we sent out a Google Doc invite to everybody in the room, kind of broke everybody up into teams in the session and then had them kind of brainstorm a list for five minutes on each category. Then we took the top one, then the teams went through and picked their top three of the list and we uploaded them to a live polling database and uh, sent out the hashtag shortly thereafter the presentation and everybody could vote on which they thought was the, was the top uh, wins, wants, and fails. And then yeah, that opened up you know, anybody outside the conference. We had kind of global participation and uh, it was great to see we could have some support from both internally and, and around the world uh, sharing these ideas. Yeah, really great job with that. I mean, that's not going to lie pretty ambitious. Uh, when you told me yeah. about the idea, I said, you know, Okay, good luck. I really hope it works out. But as someone was in the room, it totally did. I mean, it, you guys really had a great job breaking out the room. Everyone's sitting around laptops and we're sharing. And, um, you know, Brendan, you brought up a really good point when you were saying why you were doing this, which is that, you know, when you get a conference together, it, it's, it's a lot less about just the speaker and how smart they are, and it's about the collective brain power in the room. Um, and at this conference, especially, I mean, I, I got almost as much out of as the whole conference sitting at a bar talking, you know, video with Cliff Jenkins or somebody, someone that's doing something that I do, as I did in the presentations, because you could walk out down the hall without tripping over someone who is smarter than you, doing what you do, being innovative. Um, so the way you guys turned that over, I actually thought was really, really neat um, to kind of crowdsource these kind of questions. Um, so let's talk about the results of this a little bit. I mean, what were some top 
social media wins, fails, wants? I mean, wh wh what are the takeaways from this? Uh, what's the data? What do we got? All right, so when it comes to social media wins, the top three that we had were uh, most social media platforms are free. So you know, everyone's big into the freemium model. Um, the second that we had was schools using social media ambassador, like student ambassador programs. So you know, within their pages and groups, using them as kind of a voice to communicate out to prospective students, current students, answering questions, things like that. And then the number three was live streaming athletic events through their Facebook page. So you know, this kind of touches on your your presentation, where it's you know, live stream what you can, whether it be graduation or uh, you know, significant events where people can outside of campus and who are not at school can actually view and, and feel like they're part of that, that community. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, th there's a lot of really cool wins. I, I loved to see that live streaming made it. Um, yeah, I mean, to put a little context that people didn't know, I, I spoke about engaging your real-time, or engaging your global audience with real-time campus event coverage. And it was about that kind of thing, exactly. Utilizing these kind of tools to do something really meaningful. And which is, you know, I loved the idea with talking to someone about, who the, one of the guys that brought it up, saying, you know, what about sporting events? If you can do it, if you're you know, with NCAA, and depending where you're ranked, you can. Some schools can. If you can do that with Facebook. So family members can see their sons, their daughters, you know, their niece, their nephews perform. Uh, I thought that was a really, really cool idea. Um, some really, really cool wins there. Um, I agree. So now, now, I always have a question about social media platforms are free. Now, is, is it free or are people or resources, I was kind of having a debate, is, is it free or does somebody's time and effort and energy, does that cost money? Yeah, well, first of all, absolutely. Resources includes, you know, time commitments and manpower and, and woman power, uh, clearly. So I thought it was really interesting that, that social media win is that it's free. Um, I wouldn't say that's a win for me. I mean, I think that, like, marketing takes effort and time and like some of these tools might be free in the sense that there's not a cost up front but as you said there's a cost with the time investment and also I don't like the idea that there's this 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 apprehension to use a tool that has a cost um, you know what you can do with this stuff is meaningful I, I really don't like the idea that people I only want to use the free thing um, and that's it you know I, I'll, I'll say you know I know that you know Jeff at Scavenger has this issue before where he's got a really cool tool, people can use it, but oh, I want it for free. But you know, someone's got to pay for things that work and do cool things. So I mean, it's nice that there's a, I would say it's a nice that there's a low barrier to entry. And maybe that's what they meant, that it's free, so, and there's, it doesn't take a lot of time to set up. So it is nice, a big win for social media is it's easy to get out the door. Um, so I would get behind that, but I don't know. I, I'm a little on the fence. You know, I'm someone that I, I think this stuff needs budget. I think it needs to be backed by administrations. It needs to be prioritized with a line item just like everything else. Um, so while it's nice that it's kind of starts free, if you want to do it right, I mean, I think you got to be able to make some investments, whether it's with your wallet or at least with your time. Yeah, and and that kind of leads into the social media fails. Is the first one is is there's an overkill of every single department or entity on campus kind of starting a page and trying to get the word out. So I forget what what was one of the best examples of the conference. It was something along the lines of the parking office had started their Facebook page and Twitter account, and they wanted to make sure everybody followed the parking. Office and it was it was like you know is it, what's the what's the line of, of when you draw when there's there's too many pages and groups. Yeah, it's just um, it was interesting. So what about the other ones, guys? Let's talk about uh, let's talk about you know we did wins a little bit. Let's dive a little bit more into into fails then. Um, you know, uh, about, um, unused accounts that end up going and turning into social media ghost towns. And so if somebody's searching your pages, they're seeing all these you know old accounts that were set up, and yeah. somebody's kind of lost their page password or lost the admin access, um, not having a centrally coordinated strategy, uh, once again with having too many uh, people in the kitchen. And uh, another one that, that missed the top three was uh, removing every negative post and just kind of uh, you know not letting the real conversation take place, but uh, being a little bit too more controlling, trying to control the message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of fails. Um, I do think it's fair. I mean, the the, the social media ghost town one is, is a fair one. Uh, it happens a lot, and um, I think one of the big things is to me is that people think it's a failure to say something doesn't work. Um, if you're being innovative and you're a marketer, things are never going to work all the time. Um, at UCLA, I set up a Facebook page uh, for the online newsroom, and, and we put this stuff together, and uh, we ended up killing it. And we had people that were fans of it, and we put together a campaign. We, we migrated them over to the main page. We found that people weren't interested in news about all of campus. They were interested within their community. So if, you know, if they're uh, an MBA grad, they want MBA news, but they don't want news about medical and sports. So we said, OK, we need to deliver this content to them that they want, 
you know, in a new innovative way. And so what we did is we actually just shut down the page. So that's one thing people need to know. I think it's a good thing that, yeah, that's a fail, but there's a solution. And the solution is don't be afraid to kind of cut your losses that, you know, not everything's going to work every time. Don't be afraid to shut something down because don't leave it there. Because, yeah, it is, if it's a ghost town, that's a big problem. I have, you come across page all the time with people leaving questions. It's been months. No one's checking. And, and that's not only not helping. That's literally hurting you. And you and you usually see that a lot, especially when uh, with the number one fail was every department and club needs a, a Facebook page or group. When you have every department setting one of those up, and then you know at 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 the beginning you're all ambitious and you're ready to go with a lot of, a lot of content and you know a lot of engagement, and then you know the school year starts, everyone kind of has other priorities, has other responsibilities, things going on, and then every one of those accounts eventually just goes into a ghost town. So that's a you see it a lot, especially with uh, with schools and how they try to develop their presence. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, that's really interesting, too, because so much of that plays into actually Mallory Wood's presentation about student ambassador programs. You hear this idea about student ambassador programs where you get your current students to be bloggers and be ambassadors and put them to kind of work for you. But there's no reason why, and I haven't really seen this yet, that there aren't social media ambassador programs for your staff right now. Because you do want, ideally you want someone in every department, in every little unit, in every community to be an advocate and be out there and do this stuff. But the problem is all the time. People, I want to set up a page, I want to do something, but then these people don't either have the time, the commitment, the resources. You know, people, they're ambitious and that's great, um, but how are we going to scale this and back this up? And that's a big thing with social media and higher ed, I think, is scalability. Uh, just as far as how can you actually put a team together that can make this work, you know? Um, so I, I would love to see the student ambassador model applied to internal campus administration. Um, I think that could be really cool as far as a uh, you know turning a, a fail into uh, a win maybe. Yeah, and, and you just kind of led into the social media wants with theirs right there. The, the, the number one was they wanted training for internal uh, campus managers and internal buy-in across the campus. So that's really it was the vote at the top one you just kind of touched on. Yeah, it's definitely and, uh, how do you know? Here's a question. I was just looking at that before we move on. Anyone out there, if you guys are doing that in your campus, please let me know. I'm curious. You know, are you doing brown bag lunches? Are you doing training? Uh, you know, we're saying these are wants. So if you're out there and you're watching this and you're saying we're already doing that, tell me because I'd love to be able to put a post together, or have you on the show, or do something where we can highlight that because clearly these are things that a lot of people wanted. So if we can give people the tools to deliver that now, you know, I think that'd be a really, really great uh, way to turn that want to a win. Very cool, and uh, and kind of the next social media one was using alumni as brand ambassadors, uh, which is the first time I'd kind of heard uh, that take on alumni. Um, and the number three, is just, which is in my mind, I think probably one of the top important ones, is make my boss happy tools, which means kind of having an ROI and, and data and reporting to show from the social media efforts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really, really big one is how do you sell this and how do you make this happen? Uh, I think it's a really, really good question. What else was on the list maybe that didn't make it to the top three? Um, let's see. They want to, uh, I guess, using social media to increase campus community. I mean, I think one of the big things is we talk a lot about messaging and, and Facebook pages and different things from the university standpoint. But really, what, what do your students want? And, and what are your students doing? And I think uh, we should be spending more time. I wish there was more presentations covering maybe some research. On, uh, on what students are using social media for and really figuring out you know that they live in this if they're spending so much time in this world what are they doing and how can we help them kind of engage in the college experience I love it well, listen guys I really uh, you know applaud you guys for doing something a little bit different I like that we have a lot of data um, you know I was showing a couple sharing a couple screen grabs we have you know that highlight where on the map it is I'm gonna tweet out now Gabe put together a really great infographic guys check I'm gonna tweet out in just like two seconds you want to check out this infographic because it breaks down all the data. In fact, you know, Gabe, tell us a little bit about it right now while I pull up that link and get it out there for folks. Yeah. All right. So the graphic pretty much takes everything we did with our like unsession and it explains what we did, kind of the categories, and then uh, you know I broke it down into each team. So you know, Seth was the leader of uh, one of his teams, which I think was super team, super sweet and awesome. I, I that might have been. I mean, I would. I didn't name it that. I'm sure someone just looked oh, at okay. us and kind of came pop right in their head. <laughs> I, yeah. I was like, oh, Seth. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, so I broke it down into individual teams, you know, so you can find out who is the leader by their Twitter handle. And then it goes down into, you know, the wins, the fails, and then the wants. Um, and then we came up with a kind of creative, uh, um, instead of, an, you know, a thumbs up or a thumbs down, we had prayer hands because, you know, people are always wanting, wishing, you know, have on their wish list. Um, and then it goes down into uh, the global collaboration. And something that I was really surprised by was the fact that we actually got participants in Spain and in, U in the UK, which I didn't expect at all. Um, and then there's a map below that that kind of shows all the different states, all the 20 states that participated 
in the uh, in the in the poll that we had. So that was really cool. So I mean, it basically just breaks down every bit of information that we that we really had a takeaway on from ever, that everyone shared, and just put it into kind of a visual display. And and there is a winner, uh, Mallory Wood, leading Team Nice Top, said the most votes uh, for their input. So uh, there is a winner yeah. surrounded by Mallory Wood. So Mallory, thank you. You guys, Team One, I believe it was. Uh, one and uh, you guys got right down to business, and I, I saw you guys kind of blowing pat through the list faster than anybody else. You guys did a great job. Happy to hear it. Um, and listen, I'm happy to hear that Mallory is already jumping and taking credit for that uh, very quickly. <laughs> uh, glad to hear she's watching. Guys, I'm hearing some people had us drop. Um, the signal didn't drop on our end, um, and it appears that the show's still on the air. Um, so if you are watching, tweet it out and let people know that we're here. I swear. I know New Hampshire's been rough. We had power outages all week. Uh, it's been crazy, but you know the show's on. So there's a lot of people saying it's not. Uh, Want to let them know? Maybe refresh. Let's keep this going because this train ain't stopping. We're churning all day long. That's the way we do it here on High Red Live. We're trains and we churn. That's what we do. It's in our bio. So listen, guys. That was the presentation breakdowns. That was great. But let's let's be honest, right? Uh, this conference was a whole lot more than what happened in the actual you know conference halls uh, and watching presenters talk. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, a lot of nighttime activities, outside activities, just, just a crazy amount. Um, first one was one of the first things that happened was there was a launch party for uh, Recoven. Uh, you guys may know, uh, you know, Kyle, Judah, Jason Woodward, they've put together a new organization. Um, it's pretty cool, pretty different. Uh, Wilson, do you, I mean, Integral, you guys, you guys sponsored their launch party, so I don't let you guys jump in maybe a little bit and talk about your experience at the launch party, maybe what you think a product like Recoven might do for people, because that was a cool way to kick things off. Sure, yeah. Kyle, uh, I was super supportive of what Kyle's doing trying to provide open information uh, for educators who are looking for kind of unbiased reviews about products. So uh, his website, uh, when he kind of told me the idea, we thought it was really interesting for, for somebody to be able to go in and review a retention, the retention solution and be able to get uh, open feedback from administrators. And uh, we, we're all supportive of new technologies being introduced in higher ed and, and kind of maybe uh, bumping some of the the, the, techno the legacy technologies that are in place. So we, we thought it sounded like a great idea. We wanted to throw a party the same night and we decided, hey, let's just work together and we'll sponsor you know some drinks for the first hundred people that get there. And everybody you know showed up and had a great time. So I think it was a win-win on both Recoven and our part, being able to support his new company and uh, just support open information in the higher education community. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally agree, man. It was really cool. Um, but that wasn't the only thing that happened Sunday night either. Um, I just want you, this is how crazy this conference was. I'm so exhausted still from it. Um, before <laughs> even the Recoven launch party happened, um, we hung out, a higher ed live did with Marv. Um, you guys might be familiar with welcometocollege.com. Uh, they're a website uh, that essentially thinks that the college search is where it's at. That's where students make the most impact and decisions. So they have created things like a mobile app for students to take like notes when they're on their tour um, and all sorts of stuff. They, they do a lot of cool things. Uh, it's welcometocollege.com, uh, but number two on Twitter. Uh, but anyways, they have this thing called Marv, and I put a post up about it. If you guys didn't see this this episode, I put it up this week. Guys, watch this thing. They have this thing called Marv. It's a 1973 converted like RV, and it talks to you. It lets you play games. It shoots confetti out of its roof. It bounces around. Uh, it has like 25 power ports. It has you know, its own 4G signal. Uh, and it, let, it records video of college students giving testimonials of their own campuses. Let's high school students use it to help figure out where they want to go to school. Uh, this thing was crazy. So we did a whole live show from the parking lot off their 4G signal on Sunday night. You may have seen it. Um, but yeah, guys, I, I, was, I had never seen Mar before. I don't know about you guys, but that was one of the crazier and uh, cool. That was like very like a high-ed web kind of thing, I think, to have that role in there. Yeah, that was, it, was a, it was pretty cool uh, marketing interactive uh, tool for, I mean, I've never seen something like that before. So, I mean, hats off to Justin and his team for putting that together. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's great to see, uh, see somebody take a risk and do something different, uh, just like Carlin's presentation. And, and I'm from Ohio, and just welcome to college is out of Ohio, so I always like seeing innovative things coming out of the home state. Um, it, what, what he did and he, what he put together is kind of remarkable, and it, people love it. You know, people go and talk about it. Our office is, is still talking about it. We just were kind of showing what, the, uh, what, the, what Marv can do. And I know we got some great... Uh, video from Marv and he was playing music and dancing. I mean, that the thing was pretty awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it was. And that's right, not only did Marv do that, but on Monday night there was a, a high-end web after dark 
uh, which we'll talk about in a second, um, but Marv actually was the home of the bacon cook-off. It powered griddles and people were cooking bacon from all sorts of different states. Uh, that's, that's the diversity of Marv, apparently, is uh, a Monday night it was used for a bacon cook-off at the end of uh, High Web After Dark. It was kind of this big party at Buffalo Billiards, I think it was called, a pretty cool yeah. venue. Um, but it was a launch party for Link, which is Hyatt Web's like magazine and journal, uh, which is really cool. I, I give Link a lot of credit. I mean, the site is really, really well designed, uh, and the idea is just to find a way of taking a conference like this. Clearly, we're talking about it. We had a really cool time, but how do you take this dialogue and make it last all year round? Um, so they had launched Link, and we kind of had a launch party for that. Higher Ed Live hosted, and Marv cooked bacon. Um, that was Monday too. Yeah, that was that was a fun time. Next year we're cooking waffles, but you know, waffle party. I love yeah. it. I'm waffleparty.com. Someone tell me if that's available. Uh, if it is, Gabe's all over it. So very cool, very cool. Um, and also, was it Tuesday night? There was the high ball, which was like another formal event at the bowling alley. There's, it, I don't know. What of you guys? I got. I would argue I got as much, if not more, out of the whole conference outside even of the speakers. Just having a chance to be yeah. around from you know eight in the morning until you know way past midnight with people. Uh, I, I can't even count the conversations that I had uh, the, and the range of them. It was pretty just an overwhelming experience. Yeah, it was great just having, be talking to, you know, the higher ed community face to face. You see these people on Twitter, you've read their blogs, you know, and then being able to sit down with them for an hour or so and hash out some issue is, uh, is just priceless. And uh, it's something that I have, you know, finds more than some of the sessions you can get a little bit more value out of. But uh, like you said, there's so many conversations, sometimes you forget by the end of the night, you forgot that, that five, ten people you were talking to, and, and uh, there, I wish that more conferences had more breakouts like that yeah. around given topics, uh, so you could have more of that back and forth dialogue. I think it's really important with everybody in their own. Every school's so different, every company's so different, every situation's different. It's, it's nice to have a one on one with somebody, you know? Absolutely. That's the one thing that was so tough with this conference. This is where I'm going to kind of turn to the vets. So if you're watching, um, you know, you've been there before. I feel like I barely saw anybody. I was like, you know, I'm running around so hard and, and like you get those few one-on-one -on -one moments. How do you do it? Did, I mean, if you're a veteran and you've been there, I was a rookie, I was overwhelmed. Do you guys like plan who you want to like grab? Like I was just kind of like walking in a daze and like every second grabbing somebody and talking. Um, how does a veteran manage high ed web and not get totally lost? Or do you and just enjoy the ride? Because uh, you know, there were some people I wanted to talk to, some I definitely did. Um, but, you know, Tim Neckert at SUNY Oswego. So I'm like, the last day. And I was like, how is it possible? I roomed with Tim at a conference in Vegas last year. And, like, I don't even see him for two days at this conference. That's how, you know, fast-paced and stuff's going on. Um, so what are your pro tips, veterans? What would you guys think? I mean, that was hard for me. I, I feel like I missed, you know, I guess missed the way it's going to be if a conference is this rich. You're never going to get everything you can out of it. Yeah. And kind of continuing on that, I, I hope High Ed Web stays small and, and intimate. Because it was already, like you said, it was there was a lot of people. But, uh... There, it was it was manageable enough um, with with 500 or so attendees that uh, if if that keeps getting growing and growing, uh, I'm afraid you're going to lose some of the the kind of personal connections that that was there. It was it was a great group, and uh, I, I hope it continues to be a great group and a manageable group uh, as they grow because there's definitely got a lot of buzz about it. You know, that's a really good point. A lot of people got locked out. I mean, it closed eight weeks early, uh, and one of the reasons they're saying is that you know they have like a 60 percent or higher return rate. So every time a new person comes, like I'm a rookie, I'm gonna be you guys. First off, here's a good question: I'm gonna be there next year, no question. Uh, if I gotta walk uh, to Milwaukee where it's gonna be 2012, I'll be there. What about you guys? I mean, like that's the vibe I got as a rookie. I'm back, you know. Yeah, I'm riding my scooter there to Milwaukee next year. So you heard it here first. Gabe rides scooter to Milwaukee.com. It's gonna track this <laughs> whole, whole adventure. Um, but that's the thing. Yeah, how do you do that? And then. If you have some people that are interested, how do you keep it small? Because I agree. Again, another pro tip question out to the veterans, but what about size? Because, I mean, this was almost not manageable for me. It was, it was so perfect and so intimate. I would really, I agree. You could get 1,000 people to come to this easily. You could get 2,000, I honestly think. But at some point, I'm sure the organizers are dealing with this is the problem. Is, you know, how do you do that without losing everything that makes it so special and different than those other large conferences? And, and I want to say thank you to the organizers. Uh, I can't name all the names, but I worked personally with Cliff uh, from, from Xavier in, in organizing it, and they just did a great job. I thought every single part of the conference went out without a hitch, and I was super impressed with the venue, the events, both in, you know, on, uh, in the conference schedule and after the conference. Uh, just had a really great time and thought it was done extremely well. So uh, thank you, everybody, for, for putting that on. You yeah. guys did an excellent job. Mobile app, I mean, everything was, was great. Yeah. Hats yeah. off to Robin, Cliff, and the whole team. I mean, it was really well put together, and, you know, 
I applaud yeah. you guys. I, I agree. You know, to Dan and everybody else there, huge hats off from three rookies. Um, so that probably brings us to the next part with the show, man, which is really just the wrap up. What are the takeaways from something like this? Um, you know, I, I would say this is by far the best conference I've been to. Um, you know, actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and even say this. I don't say this out loud a lot. Um, I've never been a huge fan of conferences. Um, it's a huge investment of time. And, you know, let's be honest, at the end of the day, we're all getting up, you know, to do good work and to hustle and to make things happen. And sometimes a conference can be tough. You tell me to give up two, three, four days where I'm going to try to do a little bit of work in my hotel room, but it's tough. You know, where's the return on investment for me? How am I getting more out of my time at a conference than I would if I was back in the office working? Um, that's a question I ask a lot. And um, that's why I, I haven't been to that many conferences, to be honest, because, you know, I, I feel like you know, sometimes you slow down and you question with travel time. Not this conference. This conference changed all that for me. There's no question uh, what I got out of this um, and that I got out so much more than I did if I sat home. Um, it's amazing to me um, how much I got out of you know, three days. I, I packed it in, I think, three and a half days. It was very short for me. Um, but that was one lesson. Is like, man, conferences can really give you a lot. Um, I've made so many new relationships, got so much information. It kind of gave me a lot of ammo to take the, take the next year back and make some differences and make some changes. Um, so that was like the first takeaway for me was this stuff is not only worth it, but it's, it can't miss. Um, it can't be missed. But uh, what about you guys? What are some takeaways from this conference? Yeah, so, uh, so I went to a conference earlier this year, and I've seen presentations, and the whole vibe and culture that Hyatt Ed Webb is, is incredible. It's something I've never you know, seen before when it comes to this type of, this, uh, organiz you know, this type of uh, situation in terms of presentations and things like that. Um, but you know, I was talking with Brandon, and I was telling him that at Hyatt Web, and you know, as we were leaving, I was like, you know, this kind of feels like a summer camp, and that you go here and you know, having a blast, and you meet all these people, and you're like, you know, able to brainstorm and think, and just be with the same type of uh, people that just like get you, and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, everyone's saying goodbye, giving their hugs, and then they're taking their flights home, and then what do you have to do? You have to wait for the next year. So I mean, like, the big thing is. I, I relate it to a summer camp, you know? I mean, that's, that's what I think. And so now I have to wait a whole another year unless we get other types of, you know, uh, conferences like this, then, you know, uh, but. You know, I think what, what my biggest takeaway was that uh, this higher ed community really cares uh, and they're really smart. And I think uh, anybody who's looking to do something kind of innovative in higher high ed web or higher ed should be engaging with the higher ed web community yeah and uh, meeting those people, because it's like a family, uh, especially the people that have been there. I felt a little out of place when I first got there. I didn't really know many people. People are hugging, and I was just trying to kind of introduce myself and make some new friends, which definitely ended up happening, but uh, it's definitely an established you know, community there that's, that's really tight-knit. They had the band playing together uh, on, on Wednesday night at the, at the party, at the highball party. And um, it, was, it was great to be able to, I felt like by the end of it, we felt we were a bit more embraced uh, by the community and uh, we could have, you know, met, made some friendships now that can continue online until next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, it's a, you brought up one really good point that, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say this because this is the kind of reason why I do this show. I say things that I think I shouldn't say, um, but I'm going to say them, um, is that, you know, sometimes higher ed can be clicky. And sometimes you go to some events and it's people sitting around with their friends they already know and they're just talking with each other and it's all about inside jokes and that doesn't really help the industry and that doesn't really push the envelope and support innovation and support people doing good work and that did not exist at all from my experience at High Ed Web. It was amazing. I mean, I, I've met so many people. You couldn't walk down the hall without meeting somebody new. Uh, it was very welcoming and I just wanted, I don't know how they created that atmosphere. I don't know how that works. I mean, I, I haven't put on a conference before, but however it happened, I, I just want to say hats off because there, I, there was this, this amazing acceptance vibe where everyone had great ideas. I mean, people had some of the most amazing ideas that I got out of that conference were actually just two guys I met during your uh, like unpresentation workshop that I'd, I'd never seen before. I don't know. I actually think only one of them is on Twitter, the other one's not at all. And, and they just had some amazing ideas and I had great conversations. And uh, it was a really, really great culture. Um, so I have to say hats off for that because that's something that uh, can exist elsewhere and it does not here at all. Um, and that was pretty rad. So, guys, that's the takeaways, right? Um, but then the good thing, you're asking waiting until next year, you know, Gabe. The good thing is that there are regionals. So uh, I don't know when they're coming up, but I'm going to do a little shout out to the audience. You know, you high-ed web people, I know you're watching. Weigh in. There are regional conferences down in Arkansas and Rochester and some other areas. Um, people are making this stuff happen. So I haven't been to a regional yet either, 
Um, I don't think you guys have, so maybe we'll all be regional rookies as well if we can squeeze one in this year. Yeah. Uh, but that's cool, too, that they do kind of mini pocket versions of this throughout the year in different areas. Um, maybe we'll have to do one in uh, Manchester at my house. Uh, my wife will bake cookies. That sounds delicious. I, so, Seth, I did have one more comment that I would like to see maybe next year at, at a conference. Is, is The vibe was very friendly and opening, which, which was great. There was a lot of idea sharing. But there was no debates. And uh, I, I, South by Southwest, one of my favorite things is when they put two big heavy hitters up there and then they have a huge all-out debate. And I think that's a really great way to see some, you know, kind of differences, divergence of opinions meeting. And uh, I would like to see some, some debate sometime about some sort of topic, whether that be, you know, I, don't even go, I won't even go into topics right now, but uh, I think that could be great. I love the idea. Um, and this is a question I'll shout out because we're all rookies. Let me shout this out to the veterans. Um, Veterans of Hyatt Web, uh, would this be something that could work at the conference, doing some kind of open debate and discussion? Um, I'll just throw out an idea, just throwing this one out, mine, is imagine if there's a discussion where someone like, I don't know, someone that hosts things could host a discussion, just somebody that does, does that. Uh, and the conversation, just as an example, is um, Mike Petroff's watching right now, right? Um, he, uh, he's a big supporter of Facebook pages. I know Logan Bishop at Belmont's a big supporter of Facebook groups. I'd love to put Petroff, Logan, and one of you guys on to talk about you know, Integral's app on Facebook, and let's have a debate about three different ways you can use, this, uh, you know, use the same platform uh, in different ways with different tools to engage people. I do agree. I think conversations like that that could be a back and forth would work well. I think it, it's a safe environment that could do that, but I, again, I'll lean to the, to the vets to tell us if that kind of vibe could play out, because I, I think something that could be pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I'm ready for that debate yet, but I'll, I'll start doing my homework. Yeah. And as Fina says, we don't need Hyatt Web yet for a debate. That's right. Uh, so, we're gonna, and Petro says, I'm into groups more than pages. Uh, well, hey, you know, if you're on the Logan bandwagon, man, no, I'm kidding. You've been doing a good job with all log. Um, so, I, that's the thing with Facebook, too. It changes really fast. Um, so, it does. So, guys, okay, that's, the, that's a lot of takeaways. I still have more. I'm still wrapping my head around it. Um, I hope there's some regionals coming to New England. I'd love to be a part of it. I, I'm going to try and do some more streaming next year if they'll have me. I wanted to do more this year, and it kind of got away from me with the whole Red Stapler thing. Um, so, yeah, it's been pretty crazy. Uh, any final thoughts, guys, before I sign off uh, with my newfound uh, Hyatt Web friends? Hyatt Web in Boston. I mean, there's talks of that with Mike and Kyle, so hopefully we can get that going. I mean, that would be pretty good to uh, make it out to the East Coast. I, anything that brings you guys out East, I'm all in support of. Yeah. Uh, so that's really cool. So, uh, listen, guys. You know, thank you guys both, you know, uh, Brittany, for coming on the show and talking. I hope you guys watching had fun. We had a blast at the conference, and we just really wanted to have this kind of conversation because uh, I think we have a bit of a different perspective again. Um, I've never been. I'm going back. It was pretty awesome. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this has been a Rookie's Review of High Ed Web 2011. 2012 is going to Milwaukee, 13 in Buffalo. Uh, let me know when I can register. I'll send my stuff in right now because uh, I'm on board. So thank you guys, both of you, for uh, being a part of this today and hanging out. I really did appreciate not only seeing you guys at the conference, but coming on and kind of having this conversation. Thank you, Seth. Thanks, Seth. Awesome. And thank everybody from High End Web. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. It was an amazing time. Uh, so guys, thank you so much again to our guests. Thank you for watching. Thanks to High End Web folks for making that whole thing possible. Uh, again, this is High Red Live on Thursday afternoons. It's 1 p.m. today. Looks like next week we're going to be going at 4 p.m. That looks like it should be our new time slot. I'm kind of confirming that. I shouldn't even be leaking that right now. But most likely 4 p.m. Thursday is going to be our new time slot. Uh, new day and time right from Southern New Hampshire University, which is pretty cool. I'm happy to be here, happy to be a part of it, and be kind of pushing the envelope in the conversation in that sense as well. So tune in next week for another show actually coming off the heels of Hyatt Web. It's going to be the future of location-based services. And I'm bringing on Jeff Kerchick from Scavenger because he did an amazing presentation on the future of location-based services, not about Scavenger and what they do. It was really about the pivoting positions in the industry and what's been changing. And location is really big, and people are focusing a lot on the short term, the check-in stuff, and there's some amazing stuff. We're going to talk about near-field communications. We're going to talk about QR codes, a lot of stuff. So it should be a neat conversation with him. Uh, and then uh, finally, tune in next week, too, for Meet the Innovator, our new series. Uh, we are not slowing down. We are busy. We are crazy. We are juggling. And uh, we just can't thank you enough for being a part of this. So thank you guys for tuning in today, higheredlive.com. And if you have any questions, comments, ideas for shows, you just let me know. I would love to hear them. And until then, I'll see you guys next Thursday. Actually, wait, two more things I forgot to say. Uh, M. Stoner has a big announcement coming out next week. Keep an eye out for that. Can't tell you what it is, but it's pretty cool. And we have another fill-in. So we have Ashley Hendig is going to be doing a makeup show on Tuesday for this as well. So just, just go to highredlife.com, follow us. There's a lot of stuff going on. I, I can't remember. I'm trying. I can't. A lot of cool stuff is going to happen in this little window for you. I'll see you guys next week. Take care, everybody.